Hello everyone and welcome back to our virtual Mishtabura share. We're holding in Mishtabura Chelek Vav. Today we'll Mirz Hashem be learning Dav Kov Chav Dalit Ahmed Aleph. We are continuing to learn the halachas of the Dalit Minim. We pick up in Sibin Tuf Resh Nun Aleph with Siv Gimel on the very bottom line in the Shulchan Aruch on Kov Chav Gimel Ahmed Beis. Says, uh, using a different camera here because something went uh, a little bit cuckoo on my setup so hopefully this will work out right i don't know why the picture seems to keep on shifting a little bit but we'll give it a try let's see what happens okay so in sif gimel says to machaber eater a lefty noita lulav be a min kal adam even though he's a lefty and because he's a lefty really his left hand is what's similar to most people's right hand a righty the vast majority of the population are righties no disrespect to lefties but righties their stronger hand is their right hand a lefty his stronger hand is his left hand so in the parlance of halacha what we always say is that by a lefty his left hand is his right hand because it's the stronger hand and we have said in sif Bays that most for most people yitel ha'aguda biyadai hayamanis by most people, they take the lulav in their right hand. We said because the lulav bundle is comprised of three mitzvahs. It's got the lulav, the hadasim, and the aravas. And therefore, it has a chashivas. It takes precedence over the esrig. And therefore, which one gets the right hand? The lulav bundle gets the right hand, while the esrig gets the left hand. However, here in Siv Gimel, the Mechaber tells us, Eter, the lefty noita lulav biabin kal adam. He doesn't go ahead and switch and do different than everybody else and take the lulav bundle in his left hand, which is like everybody else's right hand. No, he also takes the lulav in his right hand. The esrik and he takes the esrik bismal kal adam and he takes the esrik in his left hand like the smile of everybody. He does. He does it. In the typical fashion, the same way everybody else does the mitzvah, that's the way he does it. And the Mechaber goes on to say, why? Because he goes after the general populace's right hand and left hand. And he doesn't go by his personal right hand. In other words, his left hand. Okay. Let's take a look here at the Mishtabura ice cotton yud ches on kuf chav dalit amin aleph. The basar yeminu smile to alma azlinan because in the context of this halacha says the chavetz chaim we treat the lefty like everybody else. He has to do what everybody else does. Now you might be wondering why is that so? We know that there are differences between a lefty and everybody else. For example, when it comes to putting on tefillin. When it comes to putting on tefillin, a lefty doesn't put on tefillin the same way everybody else does. So why, when it comes to taking the lulav and the esrik, does he do like everybody else? He explains the Mishtabura, and he brings this down in the Sharetzian from the name of Paiskim, anonymous Paiskim. Dedafka tefillin shehu da'araisa. By tefillin, where it's a mitzvah da'araisa, the requirement that a righty puts on tefillin on his left hand that's a daraisa. We darshed it from the Pusset. It says, A very strange spelling. And we darshed from that, Yad keha, That the tefillin go on the weak hand. So the requirement to put the tefillin on the left hand is a requirement min That's a daraisa. Therefore, the lefty also has to put on his tefillin on the Yad keha on his weekend, which is his right hand. So by tefillin, where we're playing with daraisas, the dafke tefillin, shehu daraisa, iter asal basar yamindi day. In that case, the iter, the lefty, has to go by his personal nature, and he has to put on the tefillin on his weaker hand. Avalulav dinatilasa yamin hu drabanan, contrast this to the mitzvah of dalan minim, where the question of which hand you should take it in is not a daraisa dika question. Here it's a darabana dika question. 
משום חשיבוס באלמה, תהיה בו תלוס המצווה. אבל יש דעת דרייסה דיקה רקוויירמנט, וחז"ל לוקד את זה, וחז"ל אמר, אוקיי, אנחנו מתחילים עם הסיטואציה הזאת, שאנחנו מתחילים עם הלולב בונדל שיש לנו שתי מצוות, ואנחנו מתחילים עם אסריק שיש לנו שתי מצוות. בואו נלך אחד, ונלך לדזיגנט את הלולב בונדל של הרגע הזה, ואת האסריק של הרגע הזה. אבל זה לא נכון על הפסוק. אז בכל זאת, כשאנחנו מתחילים עם הרגע הזה, יש לנו שתי מצוות, יש לנו שתי מצוות, יש לנו שתי מצוות, יש לנו שתי מצוות, In this situation, we treat the lefty just like everybody else. Now, before we even read the rest of this Mishtabura, let's, let's jump back to the Shulchan Aruch and let's see what the Ramah has to say about this. I hope it's not bothering everybody. I see that for some reason the picture keeps on jumping slightly and I have no idea what's causing that. It's not, the, the camera is not moving. I, 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 it's, it's a very high-end webcam. I don't know why it's doing this. I'm going to have to speak to my techies and find out exactly why this is happening and see if I can prevent it. Or I think I have to uh, replace my, it's called a capture card, so that my <coughs> old camera should continue to work. But in any case, says the Ramah, on the end, last word, top line, Kuf Chav Dalet Amad Aleph, Haga, the Mechaber said, we treat the lefty like everybody else. Says the Ramah, V'yeshayim Rema, however, there are those that say, and he brings this down from the Rosh, the Rabbein Yerucham, the Marivayel, V'yeshayim Rem, Ta'azlinon Basar Yamin Didei. The Ramah says, there are those that say that we, the lefty does have to go after his own personal nature, and therefore he would taka, take the Lulav bundle in his left hand, which is akin to everybody else's right hand. And therefore he should take the lulav in what we would consider to be his right hand. And he should take the esrig in his left hand. So he would be taking the lulav bundle in his left hand, and he would be taking the esrig in his right hand. Says the Mishtabrura, go back into Ois Katan Yudches, the Tam, uh, the Tam HaYesh Oimrim, says the Chavetz Chaim, the rationale of this, of these Yesh Oimrim brought down by the Ramah, the Savar does lean up off the Didei, Kemoi B'Tfilin. They say, no, if we see a precedent by Tfilin, where we treat a lefty, we go after his personal nature, then when it comes to this mitzvah also, we should treat, we should treat the lefty based on his own personal nature. Now, it happens to be that my brother, um, Yosef Asher, is a lefty. So I asked my brother, how do you take your Lulav and Esrik? Because what I remembered is that he takes the Lulav and Esrik the same way everybody else does. He takes the Lulav in his right hand, takes the Esrik in his left hand. So I asked him, and indeed I was right, and he told me, and I don't see it in the Igris Moshe, maybe I missed it, but I didn't find it in the Igris, he told me that the Rishiva Zatzal uh, the Rishiva Zatzal held Rav Moshe, uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein, the Chesad of Kodesh Lavracha, held not like this Ramah, he held like the Mechaber, that the lefty should take the Lulav and Esri in the same way that everybody else does. Okay, now let's go weiter. Uh, the Ramah said, the third line down in the middle, the Ramah says, V'chein no'agu, and that's Taka the Minig, the Ramah says the Minig is to follow the Yesh Ibrahim that he brought down, and he goes even a step weiter, he says, V'chein Iker, and that's the Iker Psak, that's the way it should be done. But I'm telling you, my brother tells me a Psak from Rav Moshe, not that way. Vem Hipech, now, as far as, well, how big of a Shaili is it over here? Says the Ramah, Vem Hipech Yotza, if you do it the other way, you're Yotza. And says the Mishnah Bro, he's cutting your test, Vem Hipech Yotza, this is not only speaking about the Shaila of the lefty, this is talking about a lefty and a righty. If a righty will go ahead and take the lulav in his left hand, the esrig be in the esrig in the right hand, it's not you're not it's not a chesaron in the lekicha of the dalad minim. This is again these are the rabbanans based on like the which the brewer said chashivusa ba'alma. It's not critical. It's not ma'akiv. However, the Yesh Machmir in Bazer, he brings down the Rados that are Machmir, Valkain, and therefore Toiv Lachsar Velitloi Veloi Bracha. Brings down here, if you look at the Sharetzian, as Kotenchov Gimel, from the Mogad of Ram, Shari Achreinim, 
um, am I, yeah, he brings down that there are those who say that you should go ahead and take the Dalaminim again without a bracha. But let's talk a read, Ois Kotl Chav Gimel in the Sharetzion. And I always like to say, we have to remember when we're learning Mishtabrura that we're learning a Sefer of the Chavetz Chaim. And the Chavetz Chaim, of course, we call him the Chavetz Chaim. Mi'esha Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim, what, what is he known so well for? For Shmir Haloshin, right? Shmir Haloshin was such an icker by the Chavetz Chaim. So the Chavetz Chaim was a man who chose his words with tremendous care. <laughs> <clears throat> and you can see that here displayed in this Sharetzir and this Chav Gimel. The Chav Tzchayim says he's bringing this down that you should take the Dalminim again without a bracha from the Magen Avram, Usha Ari Achreinim, the Kasafti Boloshin Toiv. The Chav Tzchayim points out that in the Brish Debrura, what did I write? I wrote the Alkane Toiv, Laksar Belitlai Belai Bracha. It's good to take the Dalminim again without a bracha. If you took them in the wrong hand, he didn't say that you mechuyev to. He didn't say chayev. He said toiv. It's it's good to do it. He says I wrote this balashin toiv kiel yaraba kosav because the el yaraba writes the das kol ha poiskim. It is the opinion of all the poiskim dem hechlef yotza that if you took the dalaminim in the wrong hands, you're yotza v'day ha machmeres and this shita that's machmer das yechidahi ayin shum. This is only an opinion of a yachid that there's any question that maybe you have to take it again. Says the Chavetz Chaim, that's why all I wrote was Valkein Toiv Laksar Velitloi Beloi Bracha. Okay, now let's finish off this Sif Gimel over here. Let's go back into the words of the Ramah, four lines down, near the beginning of the line by the Ois and Chaf and the Mishtabura. Says the Ramah, Vishoylet Bishte Yodav, somebody who's ambidextrous. Somebody who could use both his right hand and his left hand. He should do like a righty. He should take the lulav in his right hand. He should take the esrik in his left hand. Adam, Like everybody else. That's the psak from the kolboy. Says the Bishtabrois Katnchaf. Vishaylet Bishtay Yadav. What does this mean? Somebody who could use both hands. That he's ambidextrous. Ritzay Loimar. The Mishnah says what the Ramah means to say when he says Shailit Bishte Yadav is Sha'ise Kol Hamalachis Bishnehem Shave Bishave. It means that his right hand is just as use, usable for him as his left hand or vice versa. There's no difference for him between his right hand and his left hand. Every Malacha he could do equally well with both hands. Now that's not common. When we talk about most people who are ambidextrous, it means, yes, he writes with his right hand, he can also write with his left hand, but he writes better with his right hand than his left hand. It's not that he's truly ambidextrous. Shailut Bishte Yodav, says the Mishtabura, means that the right hand, the left hand, the left hand, the right hand, they are equal. He can do everything Shave Bishave. Avalim Nokel Oilasa is But if it's easier for the person to use his left hand, even though he could also use his right hand, that's not, look, not called a shalip yadav, that's called a lefty. Okay, so in Sif Gimel over here, we dealt with the question of a lefty. Now let's go to Sif Dalit. Says the Mechaber, four lines down, end of the line. Adam she'en lo yad, a person who never doesn't have a hand. Now, it could be that he suffered some kind of accident, could be he was born that way, or it could be that he has a hand, but his hand is not usable. Nebuchadnezzar, somebody had a stroke, and he can't use his hand. So, Adam, she'en lo yad, says the Mishnah, is cut in Chafalif, she'en lo yad, ritzayin lo yad, she'en lo yadayim klal, says the, the Mishnah, this halacha that the Mechaber is about to say is talking about somebody who has no hands. Noit alalulav bezroi shal yamin, he's going to take the lulav in his right arm, the chena esrig bezraya smile, and he's going to take his esrig in his right arm. The mik zivul kachtem bayad. The point of this halacha that the mechaber is going to tell us is the pasuk says ul kachtem lochem. You have to have a lekicha. You have to take the dalad minim. But there's no requirement midaraisa 
of the lakachta biyad. It doesn't say that you must take it in your hand. It just says lakachtem. You need a lakicha. Now we're going to see later on, it comes into play, we've already spoken about this drasha from ulakachtem, that you need a lakicha tama. You need a complete lakicha. We'll have to see what the requirements of that is. One requirement we saw already, that the, the dalad minim have to be complete in order for it to be a lakicha tama. But also we're going to see that your lakicha, your act of taking it, also has to be tama. But in the context of this halacha, of somebody who never doesn't have a hand, there is no requirement of a hand. There's only a requirement of a lakicha. Therefore, says the Machaber, it's if Dalit, Adam She'en Laya, the person who doesn't have hands, noita lulav bizroyoi. He could take the lulav in his arm, which means what he's going to do, depending on how much of an arm he has, is let's say he's going to do that. If, if, if he could grab it with his upper arm, if his upper arm is intact, so that he could grab the lulav in his, in his armpit, he'll grab it in his armpit. So he may take the lulav in his right arm, and then the esrig, I still have the esrig that I've been using as a, for show and tell. It's kind of shriveled up, if you notice. But he could take the lulav, and he could take the esrig. So he's got the lulav and the esrig. And that will be the lakicha. And what I just did is what the Mishtabura described over here in Ice Cut and Yud Test, which we already read. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, not Yud Test. In Ice Cut and Chaf. We, uh, no, not Chaf either. My apologies. Ice Cut and Chaf Aleph. We said, He'll take the Lulav in his right arm and the Esrik in his left arm. small. Okay, ice cotton chav beis, bizroyoi. What does it mean that he's going to take it with his arm? Says the Mishnah Barah, hainu beis hashechi. He's going to grab it in his armpit. So he's going to trap it with his arm in the armpit. Ve'emiesh kone. If he has a kone, which I believe the Mishnah Barah means the forearm, noito bemarpikoi. Then he could take it in his um, elbow. So... He could grab it like that. If he has the, the forearm and the upper arm and he just doesn't have the hand, he could grab it like this and he could hold it like that. That is called a lakicha. Does that not mean lakicha, Mikri? Because the Chavetz Chaim says that also would constitute an act of lakicha. Aval ein lo Yisraya klal, but what if Nebuch Leilenu, somebody doesn't have an arm at all? He doesn't have an upper arm, he doesn't have a forearm, he just doesn't have an arm at all. Ein lito bape. Says the Mishtabura, it would not be an Eitza to grab it in the mouth. Dezel lav lakichi he klau, because the Prima Godim says that that does not constitute an act of lakicha at all. Ube bekura yakiv cholak alav ayin sham. The Bikura Yaakov disagrees with this. This happens to be based on a very interesting discussion that actually has to do with the halachas of the Avoida in the Beis Amigdash. What the Kayan is allowed to do with different parts of his body when it comes to the Avoida. Okay, and Ayaz Kat and Chav Gimel, the Mechaber said at the end of Sif Dalet, he said, V'chein Ha'esrik, says the Chavetz Chaim, V'em yesh lo yad echad. Let's say the, um, the person has one hand. He should take the lulav in the hand that he has. I feel he smile even if he only has a left hand. Let's say this person was a righty. Or even if he only has a left hand and he was born with a left hand. I'm not sure what his status would be. But in any case, even if he only has a left hand, I feel he smile Nechsheves et Sloy Yemin. If a person only has one hand and he only has a left hand, that left hand is his right hand, right? It's his strongest hand. It's the only hand he has. And he would grab the esrig in the opposing arm. Now, let's say a person only has one hand, right? He only has one hand, so he's going to take the lulav bundle in that hand because, again, the lulav bundle is always going to take precedence because it has three mitzvahs, while the esrig is only one. So first, the Mishnah is saying, you take the lulav bundle in one hand, and you take the esrig in the opposing arm. So the lulav bundle gets the hand, and the esrig gets the arm. Now, how about if for some reason, 
for some reason, he cannot grab the esrig in the opposing arm. What does he do then? Says the Mishtabura, Yitel Shnehem Biyadai, he should take both the esrig bundle, both the Lulav bundle and the esrig in his hand, Baze Akarze. He should pick up the Lulav bundle first, and then put down the Lulav bundle, and then take the esrig. The Yitzah Bazek, it'll come on, if you're at base. And you're Yitzah that way, because this is a halacha that we've already mentioned several times. In order to be Yitzah, the mitzvah of Dalminim, you're not required to hold all of the Dalminim at one time. If you have all of the Dalminim spread out on the table in front of you, you could make the bracha of al Natilas Lulav, pick up the Lulav, put it down, pick up the Adasim, put them down, pick up the Aravas, put them down, pick up the Esrik, put them down. So you could do that, and you could be Yitzah the Mitzvah of taking the Dalabinim. We, interestingly enough, yesterday we mentioned the halacha that you are not supposed to take the Lulav bundle and the Esrig in one hand at the same time. Because remember, we said the problem of, the Pesach says, Ulekachtelam pre eitz Hadar, you should take the Esrig, Kapois Tamarim. It doesn't say the Kapois Tamarim, end a lulav. It says a lakakta lakat priya tadar, take the esrig. Then it says kapais tamarim ve anaf eats avois ve arve nachal. That's why the lulav bundle has the lulav the hadasim and narobis. But the esrig is not supposed to be together with them. So we actually saw one sheet yesterday who holds that if you would take the lulav bundle and the esrig in one hand at the same time, you're not yoitza, right? So I think that's why the Mishnah Brewer is not giving the Eitzah over here for somebody who has one hand that he should go ahead and he should try to take the Lulav bundle on the Esrig in the same hand at the same time. Because according to one sheet, at least you're not going to the mitzvah that way. So instead what he says is, no problem, take the Lulav bundle first, then put it down, and then take the Esrig. The Yitzah Bazak, it'll come on, Sif Yud Beis. Now we go to Sif Hey. Very, in- oh, they're all beautiful, Seifim. Let's go to Sifhe. Yevarech al netilas lulav. We're speaking here about the first day of Yom Tov. So you make the bracha of al netilas lulav. Ve'shehechayonu. And you also make a shechayonu. You're thanking the Rabbani Shalom for reaching such an auspicious time. You reached the time that you could once again be mekayim the mitzvah of the Dalminim. So you thank the Rabbani Shalom for that. Shechayonu v'kimanu v'giyonu l'azman hazeh. So Yavarek al Natilas Lulav, you make the bracha of Natilas Lulav, Veshachayanu, and you make a bracha of Shechayanu, Kaidim Sheyital Ha Esrig, before you take the Esrig, Kedei She Yavarek over La Asiyasa, so that you should make the bracha over La Asiyasa. So let's just remind ourselves of a very basic general rule when it comes to making Berchas HaMitzvahs. Whenever we make Berchas HaMitzvahs, we always make the bracha over la siyosai. We make the bracha immediately before we are mekayim the mitzvah. Over la siyosai means before you mekayim the mitzvah. Gemara in brachas, how do we know over is a lashon of before? Gemara goes through it. But we make the bracha always over la siyosai. We make the bracha immediately before we are mekayim the mitzvah. <coughs> Therefore, the mechaber is going to give us three different eitzes of how we should be noyig when making the bracha on the mitzvah of Dalad Minim. How exactly should you comport yourself? You see, what are you going to do? Leave the Dalad Minim on the table before you make the bracha? Make the bracha and then pick up the Dalad Minim? The halach is not happy with that. And the truth is that this is based on a taisvis, this is taisvis, 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 lamites. Taisvis, lamites amen aleph, diver amaschel, over la asiyosam. The Gemara on Lamites Amon Aleph says that you have to make the bracha on the Dalad Minim over la asiyosam, before you makayim the mitzvah. Says Taisvis, Mitam Zeh, for this reason, Tzarech Levarech Alulav, you have to make the bracha on the Lulav, Kaidim Sheyitlenu, before you take it. Okay, now Lulav is being used here as just a general, for a general word to apply to all the Dalad Minim. So Taisvis begins by saying, it would seem 
that you have to make the bracha of al nutilus lulav before you take the dalad minim. We times that tzarek lavar kalulav kaidem sheyetlenu. The ila acher shenotloi because if you make the bracha after you actually pick them up, mida agbe mida agbehe. Once you picked them up, nafak be you're already yitz of the mitzvah. Kidarina b'soif perkin like we say in daf ben beis am an aleph. So we have a problem over here. You can't make the bracha after you pick up the dal minim because then you were ready yitz in the mitzvah. Now you're making the bracha after you were ready yitz in the mitzvah. Umiu, however, says Tysus, we have a problem. Loy mistaber klal. It's not mistaber at all. It doesn't make sense at all, says Tysus, that you should make the bracha before you're holding anything in your hand. To heyaki varechalov. How are you going to make a bracha on it for whom munach bekli and it's it's sitting in a keli? You're not holding it. It, it, it says Tysus, that doesn't make any sense. Ha'aymer b'hakayim etzraba. We know that we learn in Masechus Menachis in Paraka Kayim etzraba in the context of Hilchas Tfilin. Tfilin me'emasay mevarech aleyan. When do you make a bracha on Tfilin? Mishas hanacha from the time that you put it on ad shas kishira until you actually tie it on. Right now, those of us who put on Tfilin, right? How do we comport ourselves with the Tfilin shal yad? Let's say we put the tefillin up on our arm, we get it into position, we slide the loop on the ritzua, and before we actually tighten it, we make a bracha, and then we tighten it. Do we make a bracha on the tefillin when the tefillin are sitting on the table in front of us in the tefillin bag? No, absolutely not. That wouldn't be appropriate, and it's not appropriate for several reasons. One reason it's not appropriate is we know that you're always supposed to be holding the chef shal bracha, the chef shal mitzvah, if possible, when you make the bracha. So we don't want it to, to be so so much before the kiyam of the mitzvah, right? You're going to make a bracha. You're not holding anything. You're not holding the chef shal mitzvah. It's sitting on the table. And also now there's more of a delay between the bracha and the kiyam mitzvah. Now you have to go, you have to pick up the tefillin, that's not part of the mitzvah. You have to slide it up on your arm, you're still not being mekayim the mitzvah. You're not being mekayim the mitzvah until you tighten it. So what are we making this whole delay for? So that's why Taisa says, it's not mistabber to say that you're going to break the, make the bracha on the tilos lulav when your dal and minim are sitting on the table in front of you, or when the lulav is in the bag and the esrig is in the esrig box. Doesn't make sense. So therefore, Taisa says... Oh, so first he continues breaking down from the Gemara and Menachas. He says, when do you make the, the bracha on tefillin? Mishas hanacha, from the time that you put it on your arm, ad shas kishira, right before you make the nat. The chal shasha ein ha mitzvah mizumenes biyadoy lasos, as long as the mitzvah is not in your hand, ready to be accomplished, loy mistabra klal lavarach alav. It doesn't make sense to make a bracha on it. You're not ready to make the bracha. You're not ready to be Mekai the Mitzvah. The Tefillin aren't on you yet. Right? They're sitting on the table. It's not, you're not even holding it yet. So you're not ready to be Mekai the Mitzvah. It's not Mestabra that that's when you should make the Bracha. Same thing by the Dal Minim. You're not holding the Dal Minim yet. You're not ready to be Yitzhah the Mitzvah. But what are you going to do? Pick it up? You're, you're ready to be the Mitzvah. So this is the, the problem that Tysus has. So Tysus gives three different approaches of what to do. Says Tysus, Veshema mishayaschelitol lulav. Maybe from when you began to take the dalad minim, you picked up the lulav bundle. Kaida mishayitol esrig. Before you pick up the esrig, mavarich. Maybe that's a good time to make the bracha. Vahainu over lasiyasan, and that could be called over lasiyasan because even though you're holding the lulav bundle already, and remember we've said it already many times. That technically speaking, you could be yitz of the mitzvah of dalad minim by picking up one min at a time. So the truth is that by picking up the lulav, you already started being mekayim the mitzvah. But on the other hand, you didn't pick up the esri yet. And Taisa says, "Shema akvim zezeh." It's very nice that you could technically be yitz of the mitzvah of dalad minim by picking up the lulav, putting it down, picking up the dasim, putting it down, picking up the rovs, putting it down, pick up the esri. Put it down. It's true. You could be behind the mitzvah that way. But the bottom line is, if you pick up the lulav, put it down, pick up the adas and put them down, pick up the aravas, put them down, and you never pick up the esrig, guess what? You aren't behind the mitzvah. 
You weren't partially Mekayim the Mitzvah. You weren't Mekayim the Mitzvah of Dalminim at all. You weren't Mekayim the Mitzvah. Because it's the Dalminim am Akvim Zeh Ezeh. They, they hold each other back from the Kiyam HaMitzvah. So, yes, to says Tesis. It's true that technically speaking, by picking up the Lulav, you already started being Mekayim, the Mitzvah of Lulav, of Dalminim. That's true. You already started being Mekayim, the Mitzvah. But if you never pick up the Ezra, you're not going to be Mekayim, the Mitzvah. Therefore, if you make the Bracha after you pick up the Lulav bundle, before you pick up the Ezra, says Tesis, that would be called Arvala so that's one eight that Tysus gives. Inami, or alternatively says Tysus, La'akr should know it'll shneim. Maybe you talk to make the bracha after you pick up both the Lulav bundle and the Esri. Ella, but, shahoifech echad mehen. But you turn one of them upside down. Kid armina besayf perkin, like we say at the end of our perik. Kishahafchai, when you turn it down, that when you turn it over, de'en yoitza b'mitzvah zeladarech gidi lasam. Because you can't be b'kayim the mitzvah, we learned this yesterday, unless you hold the minim derech gidi lasam in the manner in which they grow. The top has to be up and the bottom has to be down. Kid adarshinam b'perik lulav ha'arava, meaning k'siv atzi shitamayim dem. V'afilu nakat luhu k'derech gidi lasam in i'i, uh, oh, that's the third sheet. So, so far, Taisis gave two eitzes. To how to make the bracha over la One, make the bracha after you pick up the lulav before you pick up the esri. Two, pick them both up. Keep one upside down. Sounds very familiar, right? That's how we're annoyed. We take the esri upside down. And we make the bracha while the esri is upside down. And then we flip it over. And then Tysus gives a third answer. Says Tysus, there's even a third thing that you could do. You could talk, uh, pick up the Luliv bundle and pick up the Esrig and hold everything, hold everything in the proper way. And there's still an answer how you could make the bracha over la You know what? You have kavana, you have intent that even though I'm picking up the Dalit Minim, my intent is that I should not be Yotza the Mitzvah. Until I make the bracha. Uh, what do you mean? You did the Maisa Mitzvah already. No, the, in, the, the clear intent that I do not want to be Mekayim the Mitzvah, Taisa says that is efficacious. That will make the Yitaka not Yitzvah the Mitzvah until you make the bracha. The Avagab Darmina Besaifer U Bezdin. Even though we say Mesechus Rosh Hashanah, those of us who learned Afyemi, we're almost there. It's on Chavches Amid Beis. The Mitzvah's Eina Tzrichas Kavana. Even though we say mitzvahs ain't in tzrichas kavana, so what do you mean you had kavana not to be yitzah the mitzvah? You don't need kavana to be yitzah the mitzvah. If you do the ma'aseh mitzvah, you're yitzah the mitzvah. Says Tyson, no, not so quick. Even though we say that you don't have to have positive kavana in order to be mekayim the mitzvah, mikamokim balkarchay lainafik. But if you had negative kavana, if you had clear kavana that I do not want to be yitzah the mitzvah. You're not Yotzeh the Mitzvah against your will. You could be Yotzeh the Mitzvah if you have no Das. You didn't have positive Das to be Mekayim the Mitzvah. You could be Mekayim the Mitzvah. But if you had negative Das, I do not want to be Mekayim the Mitzvah. Then Min HaShemayim, they don't make you be Mekayim the Mitzvah against your will. So if your Das was, I'm not being Mekayim the Mitzvah until I make the Bracha, that works. So, Tysus, uh, beautiful, you didn't think you were going to learn a Tysus today, right? So Tysus pointed out the problem that we need the bracha to be over la siyasam, and Tysus gave us three eights. Okay, now, based on this, let's read the Mechaber again. Sif hey, three lines from the bottom. Yevarech al the tilas luluv, you make the bracha al the tilas luluv, vishachiyanu, you make the bracha vishachiyanu, kaidem shiyita la esrik, before you pick up the esrik, kidei shiyavarech over la siyasai. This was Tysus' first eitzah. Pick up the Lulav bundle, make the brachas, then pick up the Esrik, and that's called Arvalasi Yasai. I, or alternatively, or alternatively, says the Mechaber, I, Yapaycha Esrik, or turn the Esrik upside down, Achi Yavarik, until you make the brachas, and then turn it back up. That's Tysus' second eitzah. Says the Mishra Barais Katan, Chaf Dalit. You have to make the bracha before you pick up the esrik. Because you can't make the bracha before you pick anything up. 
Because the Mishnah quotes Taisvis. It's not Mestabra that you should make the bracha while you're not holding anything and the lulav is sitting in its case or sitting on the table in front of you. Like Taisvis beautifully explained with the, anal- with the comparison to Tefillin. You don't make the bracha before the, the Tefillin are on you while they're sitting in the, in the Tefillin Bartel on, on the table, right? You're not holding the Chepzesha Mitzvah. You're not ready to be Mekayim the Mitzvah. You're not holding it in your hand. You're not ready to be mekayim the mitzvah. You can't make a brach on the mitzvah. V'chein, ein levarich achesh enotel kol arba aminim. And you can't make the bracha after you pick everything up to be eaten over lasi yasam because you need over lasi yasam. Hilkach, therefore, says the Mishtabura, mevarich kai de b'shiit ala esrik. That's why the Mechaber says, make the bracha before you pick the esrik up. Dezeu over lasi yasam because that constitutes over lasi yasam. Because even though you started being the kind of mitzvah and you picked up the lulav bundle, if you ultimately don't pick up the esrik, you won't be able to the mitzvah. Shema akvin zezeh. Because the, the dalad minim work against each other. If you don't ultimately take all four, you're not making the mitzvah. Tahainu she'im chasa lo yezeh min aminin. If ultimately you don't take one of the dalad minim, l'kulei alma lo yotza. Everybody agrees you're not yotza the mitzvah. Helkach mikri over la siyasa. Oiz katan chafei. Or the Mechavah gave another Eitzah. He gave Taisus his second Eitzah. Or pick up the Eitzah upside down. With the stem, the Uketz going up. Because you're not Yitzah by taking the Eitzah in that manner. Because you have to hold it. Then after you make the Bracha, Yapaych Ha'Uketz. Then turn it around, lamata, put the ukits going down. Kiderch gidilos on the way it grows, the yaitzah bazen, then your yaitzah. Vayin be beis yaitzah. Now the Mishnah Bura says, take a look at the beis yaitzah. The yesh oid yaitzah, that there's another yaitzah. Ha ha, we, we saw third yaitzah of Tysus. The yesh oid yaitzah, she yeh kaidem la siyasam. There's another yaitzah of how to make the bracha kaidem la over la siyasam. And the hainu which is, she yeh that you should have intent. Shaloi lotze spa mitzvah, not to be out the mitzvah, ad achara bracha, until if you make the bracha, Tysus is third eitzah. Vayin be beer agra, but he says, take a look at a very interesting beer agra. Shekosav de zeha eitzah hi hayoisem of cheresh abukulon. The gra happens to like that eitzah the best of all. However, in. <laughs> Yeah, in Sharetzion Ois Katan Lamid, the Chavetz Chaim points out that while the Gra says that that third eighth of Tysus is actually the best, the Gra also is not, is not really concerned with the whole problem of Over La Siyosin over here. And that is, there are some Sheetas that actually hold that the Bracha of, the, the Bracha of Al-Natilus Lulav is an Ois Nam. It's an, it's a, it's, um, an exception to the rule of the requirement to make Berchas HaMitzvah's Kaid of Lasiyasam. There are those Shittas that say that the very nature of the Mitzvah of Dalad Minim is that you cannot make the Bracha Kaid of Lasiyasam. Why? Because of Taisus' initial problem. You can't make the Bracha if you're not holding it, so you have to be holding it. Okay, so there's no way to make the Bracha Kaid of Lasiyasam. By Tefillin, there is a way to make the bracha kind of lasiyasam. Because you could be holding the tefillin, but you didn't make the kshir yet. But by lulav, by dalaminim, there's no way to make the bracha kind of lasiyasam. And therefore, it's an exception. This is an exception to the rule. Somebody asks you a trivia question, which mitzvah, which one of the brichas of mitzvahs doesn't have to be made? Arva lasiyasam. The answer, according to these sheetas, is the bracha of al lulav. And they actually say that that's why the bracha is made al nitilas. Luliv. It's not um, lintel luliv, um, like lishmaya kol shoifer in the future, to hear shoifer, or to take the dalin minim. I'm not a linguist in Hebrew. Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvaysa v'tzimat v'tzivanu likach es haluliv, to take the, the, the luliv in the future. It's al nitilas luliv. On the taking of the lulav, the, the lashon of the bracha itself is mashma that this is a bracha that's not made over lasiyasam. It's made after you already took it. So the Gra says that he's not so concerned with this whole problem. 
Bottom line is our mini, the, the, the widespread mini, is to use Tysus' second Eitzah, which is to take the Esrig upside down and then flip it over after you make the Baracha. Aizkat Lechavav says the Mishnabura Ad She Yavarech, um, Ad She Yavarech, the Vechaber said, or you take the Esrig upside down until you make the Baracha, says the Mishnabura Vim Shachach Levarech Kaidab Lekicha. Let's say you forgot to make the bracha before you took the dalad minim, and now you're already holding everything in the proper way. You're holding the lulav and you're holding the esrig right side up. What do you do now? It <laughs> says the Mishtabura, Mavarak Akakach. You make a bracha afterwards. The Hagama Ninua Hu Mina Mitzvah. Because you're still being Mekayim the Mitzvah. Making the Ninuit, the Nanuim, shaking the lulav in the proper fashion is also part of the Mitzvah, and therefore you can make the bracha even after you actually picked everything up. Okay, says the Ramah, bottom line, Haga, v'yavarech me'umid, the bracha of al-Nitilus Lulav and the Shechianu, you have to make the brachas standing. V'lo yavarech rak pam achas b'yoyim, also, you only make the bracha of al-Nitilus Lulav once during the day. Af al-pi, shenoitloi kama pa'amim, even if you happen to take hold of the Dalminim many times during the day, it doesn't matter, you only make the bracha of al-Nitilus Lulav once a day. Says the Mishnah back on Kukhav Dalin Amin Aleph, Ois Katan Chav Zayin, V'yavarech Me'umid, you make the brachas standing, Unitila Soi, Tia Gam Kein Me'umid, and you also have to do the Nitila, you have to take the Dalad Minim also while you are standing. Ubi Di'eved, Im Asa HaBracha, the Gam HaMitzvah Meyushiv, but Di'eved, if you did take the Lulav and Esrik while you were sitting, you made the Nanuim Meyushiv, Yotza, you are Yotza the mitzvah. You make the brach only once a day, even if you take the Dalad Minim many times during the day. Lehidr mitzvah, why would somebody do this? Lehidr mitzvah. Keminik anchi Yerushalayim ki isa b'gemara daf mem aleph amid beis. Beautiful gemara. The gemara says on mem aleph amid beis. The gemara says... Give me one second here. Man, Aleph, um, Bez. Tanya, learned that a bracer. Rebbe Loza brought Tzadik Oimer. Ka chayo amin hagan shal anche Yerushalayim. So was the minig of the Yerushalmis. Adam yoitzi mi beisai v'lulava biyadai. Person left his house, holding his uluv. Halach lebeis hakdeses, he went to shul, lulava biyadai. He was holding his uluv. Kari Kriyashma Umaspal, he said Kriyashma, and he David Shman Esre, Vilulava Biyadai. He was holding his Ulav. Kari Batira, he read from the Torah, the Nisa Eskapov, or he was a Kayan and he had to Duchin. Then Manicha Al Gabi Karka, then he would put it down. Hailak Lavaka Khailam, if he went to do the mitzvah Bika Khailam, or Lanakam Avalam, or to go be Manakam Aval, Lulava Biyadai. Niklas Lubesa Madrish, if he went to the Basar Madrish to learn Torah, Mishaga Lulava Bi Abunoy Bi Aravdu Bi Achluchai. Then he would put down the, the Lulav and Esrik because then he has to be able. Rashi says, Tarid Bishmaita. He's being Isaac in learning. The Yipam Yadav. He's learning the Mishtabura. If he's holding the Lulav and Esrik, he's going to get so involved in his learning, he might drop them. So then he has to put them down. Also, when he's laning, he has to put them down because he's got to open and close to save a Torah. He needs his hands. But other than that, the Anchi Yerushalayim, they were busy holding their, their Dalad Minim all day long. And the Gemara says this was because Kama Chavivay Saleim HaMitzvahs, how much they loved the mitzvah. It was always difficult for me to understand. I, it's hard for me to understand it. The people who take their Dalad Minim, they bring them to Shul, they leave them in Shul. I, I can't bring myself to do that. I bring my Lulav and Esther home with me. I want to see them in the house. I want to see that they're properly taken care of and properly watched. And I want to walk to shul with them. And I want to walk home with them. They're like, take it to, the, to, take it to shul and just leave it there? I don't know. Somehow it doesn't sit well with me. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for joining me for Liman HaTar. The discuss of Liman HaTar should be Megan against Klai Yisrael. Your Rosh Hashanah should send Yeshua Sifu and said, Parnasa Chiduchim to all those in need. And we should be zeichet to see the B.S. Gal Tzedek. Be well.